let f of x equal x to the 8th times the quantity x minus 9 to the 8th divided by the quantity x squared plus 3 to the 8th. If we were to use product rules, quotient rules, and chain rules here, we would be in a world of hurt because there's a lot of each involved. Now, it may seem uh, extraordinary as a concept, but this problem really does get to be much easier to evaluate if you, in if you involve logarithms. So, for instance, I'm going to define this function as y. And I will take the logarithm of both sides of that equation. That's perfectly fine to do. You can apply any function that you want to both sides of an equation, and that doesn't affect what any answers are. The reason that we might do that is because Logarithms have a lot of really helpful properties when it comes to decomposing quotients, products, and exponents. So for instance, uh, two items that are, uh, are divided with logarithms can be decomposed into two logarithms that are subtracted. So that makes the problem a little bit simpler. Any time we have logarithms of two items multiplied, then we can decompose that into uh, two logarithms that are added. And finally, another important property of logarithms is any time we have a, an exponent on the argument of our logarithm, we can pull that out as a constant multiplier. So this happens to all be eights, but that's okay. There we have it. Now, we haven't done any derivatives just yet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the derivative of this equation and the thing that's left, because I still have natural log y over here on the left-hand side, I still have an equation that I can use implicit differentiation on. So I'm going to use implicit differentiation. I'll just note this as implicit differentiation. All right, so the derivative of the natural log of y. So it's involving the variable y, which means we have to use that chain rule property. So it's 1 over y times dy dx. So using the chain rule. Next up, natural log of x is just 1 over x for the derivative. x minus 9 is just 1 over x minus 9 for its derivative. And x squared plus 3 is just 2x over x squared plus 3 for that derivative. So we have now dy dx equals y times 8 over x plus 8 over x minus 9 minus 16x over x squared plus 3. And we're almost done. Uh, we could leave y in here as long as we evaluate any derivatives using both the x and y value of the point. If we wanted to plug y back in, we absolutely could do that. We have those terms here. Um, just pay attention to what the problem wants. It may request that you put that back in, which I think it does here. So we will do that. And this might not look simple by any means. But I guarantee you, the way we came up with this answer was a lot simpler than the alternative of using multiple layers of product, chain, and quotient rules together. So definitely a big advantage here.